Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a video that I kind of intended on filming just not in the current circumstances. This video is going to be a Christmas Q&A however at this point in time of me filming I have not posted anything on Instagram or Twitter asking for your questions yet. However, because I have to go back to Aston Martin today and this video is also going to tell the story that happened 24 hours ago, how I ended up with this. A frosted glass blue Aston Martin DB11. So I went to Gaydon yesterday with my Arden Green DB11 and somehow have ended up with this. This video is going to reveal all, as well as hopefully get you guys into the Christmas spirit, into the festive period, with a bit of a Q&A as well. So first things first, I need to post on Instagram and Twitter a picture of this car asking for your questions. So this is a semi-live Q&A, pre-recorded to be uploaded to YouTube. So let's kick this video off and get on the road in this amazingly specced DB11. But before we get in, check out the sparkles on the paintwork. I've taken it up uh, an off-roading dirt track because I thought that the pictures were gonna be absolutely phenomenal. And I love this color. I think this is a very, very nice Aston Martin DB11. So let's jump in to the very blue and cream leathered interior, get posting on my phone and then get this video underway. Okay, so I've taken a few pictures of the DB11 like so here we go that is what i'm about to post onto instagram fire it to twitter as well let's get some questions rolling in we are live and i suppose whilst we wait for the questions to roll in the parking sensors are going to go mad I could turn them off, but it's also quite funny. It's very easy to get out of here. The parking sensors sound like it's more difficult than it is. Right, okay, I'm out now, you can shush. And today is the perfect weather for this colored car. So let's quickly start off with what the hell has happened for me to get a second Aston Martin DB11 in the space of 24 hours. Yesterday was a very, very stressful day for me. I've been pre-recording videos to get uploaded over the Christmas break so that I can at least have a couple of days to spend with my family as well. So I was out yesterday filming some videos to go live over the Christmas and New Year period. Very, very stressful. This GoPro was not playing ball, and if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen that there was a string of highly frustrated tweets. Now, in and amongst all of this high levels of stress, anxiety of the fact that these videos just weren't working, I was gonna be late to dropping off the Aston Martin back at Gaydon. It's around an hour and a half, but in traffic it can go up to two and a half, three hours. So I did not want to get stuck in the rush hour traffic. My plan was to arrive at Aston Martin around half past one, drive back, arrive back in Watford at three o'clock in the BMW M3, so that I could edit the three videos that I've been shooting over the last few days or so, so that I could just get ahead of the workload. Well, as I pulled into Aston Martin Lagonda in Gaydon, near Stratford-upon-Avon, I think, it's the closest big town that I saw on the map, I realized that in and amongst all of the stress, recharging of GoPro's battery and filming, that I had unfortunately not remembered a key element to my trip home. Pardon the pun, key element. I had not brought with me my BMW M3 key. I arrived at the entrance to Aston Martin in my Arden Green DB11 thinking, I've got enough time to drive back and get back in this car, but that is so many miles, on top of already all of the miles that I've already done. So I went in and I basically said, look, I have massively screwed up here. I've forgotten my BMW key half thinking that there could be an Aston Martin driver driving past Watford or I was going to probably call my mum or sister to be like can you drive my key from Watford to Aston Martin but it just would have been the longest trek ever for anyone involved and 
Anyway, I said this to um, Aston Martin and they said, give us five minutes. Give us five minutes and we'll come back to you. And off they went and came back and they goes, we can swap your DB11 for a DB11. And my heart just started racing. I was so excited. I generally could not believe what was going on. It was the last thing on my mind that Aston Martin were gonna be like, oh, we can give you another car. I thought that I was gonna have to jump in with an Aston Martin driver, drive home, get the key and then drive back. I thought that I might have to get a train back and then get a train in the morning. I had absolutely no idea what was going on. And Aston Martin handed me over the keys to this incredibly specced, very differently specced, Aston Martin DB11, which made the very, very highly stressed day so much better and I just cruised home, albeit I was incredibly tired from driving around seven hours there or thereabouts filming, going there and back. I went through a whole tank of fuel in the Arden Green Aston Martin doing all of the filming because the GoPro didn't work. So, whilst we're driving back and cruising, um, I thought that it would be the perfect opportunity to film the Christmas Q&A that I was gonna film anyway in my BMW M3. We're gonna be doing a Christmas Q&A in the DB11, which I think is a lot better. I have filmed a lot with a DB11 over the last week or so, but it's such a wicked car, I don't feel like I shouldn't be filming with a DB11. So let's get this very festive Q&A underway. And before I even look at the questions, one question which is going to be, when are the winners announced to this competition? This is a competition that I did where you can win my Christmas shopping. 5,397 comments. All you have to do is comment on that picture for your chance to win one of my Christmas shopping items that I bought and filmed in a video that's going. I'm announcing that on the Christmas Day video. I'm filming a video that is going live on Christmas Day. It is gonna be very, very festive and is a head-to-head -head challenge. And I am going to be announcing in that video who has won. The most recent question is Jack Harvey 1711. Perfect first car to me, Voxel Astra, 1.6 SXI 2007, what a beast. DQ Supercar Spots, best and worst Christmas presents received. One of the best Christmas presents that I will always remember was my Game Boy Color. I had a turquoise Game Boy Color and it came with Pokemon Blue. And my brother got Pokemon Red on a purple Game Boy Color and that was it. That was it for about a month. We were non-stop trying to complete that game. The worst Christmas present I've ever received. I think too many of my family members watch my YouTube videos for me to single out one item that I've got. However, every year Santa bought me an orange and an apple. I started to clock on that there was only four oranges in the fruit bowl, whereas the day before there was five so I kind of realized that maybe Santa was just taking them from the fruit bowl in the kitchen that I actually started writing to Santa every year to say, please do not give me an orange and an apple because I just never eat them. Ollie Forsyth, turkey or goose? I don't think I've ever had goose. Not at Christmas anyway, it's always been turkey. However, my favorite part of the Christmas meal is pigs in blanket. Okay, let's go to the first question that was asked, wp.leads, what's on your Christmas list? Ah, uh, what is on my Christmas list? I think I've asked for a new pair of trainers and that's it. Everyone has been asking me throughout November and December, what do I want for Christmas? And to be honest, I have no idea. Okay. We've got we've got to a nitty gritty question. Shaquille two one zero four zero three. Are you going to be putting an aftermarket exhaust on your M three? Yes. Mark Carter Denita. Mark Carter Denita. There's some sort of fight going on in there. What is the best car you have experienced or driven in for two thousand and sixteen? It could be the one that I'm sitting in. The DB11 for me, my favorite car at Geneva, now getting the opportunity to get behind the wheel of it and to see the direction that Aston Martin are moving in, not only with their engines, with the Aston Martin 5.2 V12 twin turbo and the AMG 4 liter bi-turbo that is gonna be sitting in the Aston Martin Vantage, what they're doing in terms of diversifying the design, also the interior quality. I've had a ton of fun driving this car, so the DB11 could actually be 
the best car that I've experienced in 2016? This is a good question because this is a really, really hot topic on the automotive space on YouTube. Iconic X. What do you think Sam from Seen Through Glass should get for his F-Type replacement? Now, we did have this kind of conversation in LA as well, and I mentioned that the V12 Vantage X was a great shout. Front engine, massive, massive engine on a short wheelbase. He will have tons of fun. He went out in the other Sam's V12 Vantage S that had been mucked around with the exhaust system, all blacked out with carbon fiber everywhere. To me, the V12 Vantage is an incredibly epic car. So there, I think there's two options for Sam. R8 V10 Plus, because it is the most solid, well-rounded supercar that you can buy for 100, 110,000 pounds. It is the most bang for your buck within that price category, along with the AMG GTS, but I've got the AMG, unless he buys mine. Or the Aston Martin V12 Vantage S. If he can get into a McLaren, that would be next level, dream level stuff, but I think the most realistic option for him, Aston Martin or Audi. R8 V10 Plus. And finally, there have been a fair few questions talking about 2017 and also best memories of 2016. There will be a separate video going live of best supercar spots of 2016, my best memories of 2016, and in the new year, I'm gonna be talking all about what is happening in 2017. There are gonna be some epic road trips. I've got some mega, mega plans, whether it be in the AMG GTS, whether it be in the M3, or the replacement to the AMG, GGTS. All of that is still yet to be decided, but I'd like to say thank you so much for watching and tuning into Supercars of London and supporting however long you've been supporting on my channel. It is truly, truly overwhelming to see Supercars of London grow in the way that it's growing and what a fantastic car community that we have been able to create. So thank you very, very much. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon on Supercars of London and I'll give it a massive thumbs up to you guys and I hope you get everything that you want.